Hello, my friend. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Mark Fisher Fitness's general manager. It's Alex Carter Van Pelt. It's his first time on the podcast. I'm so excited. He shares the two critical systems we use on our membership team at Mark Fisher Fitness, so you can use them too. And he also shares some great tips for managing and leading a team. So if you want to improve your membership systems and your leadership skills, this is a great episode for you. So let's get started. <music> Hello, fitness business nerds. What's up? Welcome to another episode of the Business of Unicorns podcast. And I'm so friggin' stoked today because I'm speaking with fellow MFFer Alex Carter Van Pelt. Welcome, my friend. Hi. How's Hi. it going? You have such a regal name. I feel like I'm introducing royalty with all all those words in your name. I, I know. I feel like I'm from like some old steel family in <laughs> Connecticut or <laughs> Pennsylvania or something. <laughs> I'm not, incidentally. But um, and this is your first time on the podcast, right? So welcome. First time, Virgin. I, here I am. I can't, I can't believe it. I'm so excited. I hope there'll be many more. But dear listeners, if you haven't heard of Alex before, Alex is basically the general manager at Mark Fisher Fitness, and before that, uh, worked on the on our growth squad or sales team, and before that, was a ninja for how long? When did you start coming to Mark Fisher Fitness? February 2014. Wow. So almost 10 years now. Oh my gosh. In. That's wild. That's wild. And has been, Alex has been an incredible general manager for how long? When did you take over this role? I should know all this, shouldn't I? Uh, would have been end of October end of 2021. October. That's right. I was going to say, right right as we were you know, creeping out of the pandemic, you took over this role out of. I oh, should yes. put that in air quotes for people on the podcast. I'm using air quotes. Came out of the pandemic. Yeah, so you've been doing it for well over a year now and has just been crushing the shit out of it. And I, I don't say that lightly. You know, I've praised you many times, so I can do it again on this podcast, but Alex is just such a badass, so good with people, such great attention to detail, so good at managing systems, so good at organizing um, uh, teams. And so we're just so grateful to have him. So I'm so excited to have you on this podcast, my friend, um, to share oh, some of your you. wisdom and knowledge and special special sauce with our listeners. Um, can you just say a little bit, I know I've kind of already went over your journey in MFF, but you can just say a little bit about um, how those transitions all came to be. Can you just talk a little bit about your, your time in MFF since you've been a ninja? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, you know, I came to MFF, uh, like so many do, recommended by a friend. Somebody said, you have to do this Snatched program that everybody mm -hmm. talks about. Mm -hmm. Um, it was really sort of at the height of snatched mania. And um, I came in, I was one of those people who thought, I don't want to ever work out ever. <laughs> this is not for me. <laughs> and lo and behold, uh, y'all changed my life a little bit. And uh, I was hooked ever since. And I, uh, I continued to be a member, a uh, loyal member for many, many years. And when the opportunity came up to work at MFF, they were, I know you were developing sort of a new sales role. Yep. I had been in hospitality up until that point. And I thought, you know what? I have sales experience. I There's nothing I love more than MFF. This might be the perfect fit. And it just, it wasn't quite the right time. Um, and then, you know, of course the pandemic happened, <laughs> that little thing. Yep. Um, and on my return to New York, um, it, the, the role sort of transitioned in a way that, you know, opened a, a door for me. And I, uh, I came to be a part of the the sparkly, glittery unicorn overlords behind the scenes. <laughs> well, we've been so lucky to have you. And again, I'm so stoked to share some of what you're amazing at with our listeners here today. So let's let's dive in. Um, first, yep. can you just maybe share what you do as general manager at MFF? You wear many hats. Can you just explain kind of how your role fits into Mark Fisher Fitness? Sure, yeah. Um, I do wear a lot of hats. Um, I change them out frequently. Um, <laughs> fancy ones, not so fancy ones. Yep. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, essentially, uh, as I came into the the role, it was it was slightly undefined because we went from a larger team to a small team. You know, I think pretty quickly during the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, you know, people scattered, and you know, there were other job opportunities, um, and so the role as it was when I came in was a little nebulous. It was like you you sort of do this, but you mostly do this, mm -hmm. and um, so the past year and a half has really been about refining that. Um, but, you know, big picture, I, you know, I manage our facilities, I manage our front desk staff, our Rainbow Wranglers, as we call them. Um, I act as sort of a, um, you know, a steward and a liaison of the, the core values at MFF. Um, you know, I'm 
one of those open open door sort of people. Anybody can come and talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, and most specifically, I manage the membership and ninja services side of things. So anything related to anything that happens to a ninja once they have a membership with us. Um, and all of the extra fun stuff and all the extra not fun stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So once mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> once someone is done with our sales team, or in our case, we call them our growth squad, then they get passed on to the membership team, which Alex manages uh, as a core function, right? And, uh, and they really take care of our ninjas. We have hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, so it's a big task to take care of them through their whole remaining life cycle. So let's mm -hmm. dive in. Let's talk specifically about kind of some of those membership systems that you manage. And I want to pick out just like, you know, one or two things that we do at Mark Fisher Fitness as part of our kind of membership processes that we think are really useful. I know recently you and um, I think the rest of the team read the book. Um, uh, uh, what book was you read? Um, Never Lose a Customer Again. Thank you so much. Sorry, the title yeah. just escaped me. Never <laughs> Lose a Customer Again. Yeah, and, and you all made some changes recently kind of inspired by that book. So maybe let's start there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, if you haven't read the book, uh, it's Never Lose a Customer Again by Joey Coleman. Um, we read it collectively. Um, we did some sort of book clubs where we would, you know, take our biggest takeaways, bring them to the table and come up with new ideas for ways we could um, show up better for the Ninja Army. Um, and this is my favorite thing I've read since I started MFF, so I can't recommend it highly enough. But um, I think the thing that sticks out that we took most seriously when, um, you know, implementing it into our business is the handoff from our growth squad to our membership team. Cause we realized there was this huge valley between them. You know, there's, there's someone who sort of held their hand the whole way through learning what MFF is to trying mm -hmm. it out, to deciding they love it, to becoming a member. And then once they became a member, it was sort of like fly free, sweet babies. Yeah. And, you know, then when it when it comes time for uh, maybe the not so fun stuff or the bigger questions or, you know, I need to change this. I need to freeze this. I need to take some time off. You know, I think some of our ninjas felt a little adrift, like, who do I talk to? So we wanted to close that gap as much as possible. So we right. took several steps in introducing the membership team to the ninja mm -hmm. during the onboarding process to make that transition seamless. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I think well, already for our listeners, there's two takeaways. One is go read that damn book, Never Lose Customer Again. I think it's a great one. And I think you and other people on the team really thought it was actually one of the more valuable ones our team has read with like real practical, applicable lessons. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. And then two, you know, really making sure that if there's someone in your gym who is doing kind of the sales, that's the first point of contact, that they pass them on, they pass that person on to whoever's going to take care of them after that. In some small gyms, it's the same person, so there's no pass off needed. But if you have separate people who take care of the new folks versus take care of the folks who have been around or are a member, then you might want to make sure that pass off is really clean. So can you just walk through some of the ways that we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, I think one of the most important things is the Grow Squad starts to prepare them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in a few days time, you're going to receive an email from our membership wizards. That's what we call ourselves yep. uh, from our membership wizards. You'll get to know them a little bit better. They'll tell you a little bit about what you can go to them for. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we sort of get the ball rolling through email and text right away. Yep. Um, then we, we have a, a great automated um, email campaign that we put out all new ninjas into um, and it hits a few milestones along the way. You know, it's not just about the Ninja Handbook or how to book classes, but we go the extra mile. We have an email that says, uh, you know, meet your fitness director in, in uh, which they get to know a little bit about Chris, our fitness director. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, a meet the membership wizards email and it has all our photos in it. It has a little blurb about each of us so that, you know, by the time uh, this person feels emboldened to reach out to membership to ask those those big questions, they feel like they kind of already know us. Um, that was very important. Um, and, you know, in terms of making it a warm handoff, uh, specifically, uh, you know, let's say Emily is selling a membership to someone, she'll specifically connect us via email and say, hey, membership wizards, this is Michael, and uh, mm -hmm. he's brand new here at MFF, please take good care of him. And we always respond with, uh, Michael, we can't wait to get started with you. Yep. You know, it's all those little micro steps along the way. 
Yeah. Thanks for spelling that out. Cause I think that's so important for our listeners to hear that like, you know, that kind of handoff has multiple layers. There's like a preparing, preparing for the handoff. There's like introducing ourselves. There's a warm, like proactive, you know, uh, email introduction and all that goes a really long way to making sure new people who are sometimes a little nervous, a little confused, <laughs> a little anxious, yeah. right. That they feel like their hand is being held through, through their first you know, a few months with us. So bravo. I think that's fantastic. And how, how ninjas responded to that so far? Um, I think it's been really fantastic. You know, it's, it's hard to tell because, you know, we're dealing with people who are new, so yeah. we never get a second chance to make that impression. Yeah. Um, but I have found that, um, you know, people feel much more comfortable reaching out to us. We mm -hmm. actually, we saw an uptick in phone calls, I think from some people, yeah. Because they feel like they, they know who the human is that they're going to be talking to. Yep. Um, we've had a couple of people that have said like, oh, you know, uh, one of our membership wizards, Craig, they'll be like, oh, Craig, I remember you from that email. Yeah. And, you know, there, there's just sort of an instant um, uh, familiarity there that didn't exist before. Yeah, that's huge, especially because, you know, listeners don't know this, but, you know, Craig, who, um, who Alex was just mentioning, one of our membership wizards, doesn't even work at the gym. He's remote. Right. So like yep. no one will ever see Craig. <laughs> and so the fact that we can, you know, share a, a name, a picture and a blurb, and it feels like an, a human that they can connect with is such a great win. So amazing. Thanks for sharing that, Alex. Um, let's switch gears. I think there's, there's another system that I think we've used at MFF for years. And it, this was all, I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit about the origin and it's, um, it's because we've always had so much volume. Like even in the first few years of MFF, we were dealing with like a hundred and some people and then 200 and some people and then 300, 400. Like the Ninja Army grew very quickly at MFF. Mm -hmm. And so by necessity, we had to really use forms as a way to communicate with members. And that is a system that stayed in place. You've made it better over the years. So you can just kind of walk people through like the, the, our system of using forms for membership communications and, and requests. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love forms. I could talk about it all the time. Um, it was, it was, this, you know, it was a system that when I came in, I was like, this feels somehow antiquated. And then I realized over time, like how advanced it was. Yeah. Um, it's uh, so, you know, when we talk about forms, there's four that we use the most at MFF. Um, the, you know, when someone joins, you know, we have a join form. When someone terminates at the end of their membership, we have a termination form. And in the middle, the two that get used the most, I would say, are our freeze form and our change form. So if anyone ever wants to change their membership, take on more sessions or less, um, or if they want to freeze for a while, if you know they need to take a couple weeks off, they'll be out of town, or uh, they have something going on medically. Um, those forms exist. They're um, out there. They're in the Ninja Handbook. Anybody can access them at any time so that, you know, one, it uh, reduces the amount of time between someone wanting something and someone getting something. Yep. Um, and two, it, you know, it cre there's an automated process in the middle that makes our lives on the processing side much easier. Yeah. Well said, my friend. Can you just talk a little bit about <clears throat> logistically how these things function? We're saying forms, but assuming everyone knows what that means. But, you know, like these are really online forms that people fill out. Can you just talk functionally about how it works? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think we all fill these sorts of things out every day, um, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, filling out billing information or what have you. Um, I'm sure everyone listening is very familiar with filling out an online form. Um, but essentially, it's a questionnaire, um, yep. you know, where we gather all the sort of uh, valuable information that we need to process either a, a change, a, a, you know, a, a new membership, a freeze. Um, and then we take all of that information and we're able to execute it in our CRM. We're able to make sure, you know, okay, are you set up for these specific emails that are come that are going to mm -hmm. come through? Um, the the process is it seems very simple on the front end. Um, it does a lot of really cool, intricate things in the middle that we have worked uh, very hard to automate so that we don't have to do every single step. Um, and then that way, on the back end, there's just a couple boxes here and there we need to click to make sure everybody gets what they want. Yeah. I love that you shared, you, you said that, you know, one of the big benefits here is that people just ninjas, our clients, right. Get what they want faster because these forms just help us all be more efficient. I mean, what happens yeah. in, instead of using forms is that a client will email you or in some places, some gyms, I know they'll text their trainer and say, I need mm -hmm. to freeze my membership and go on vacation for a month or I'm, you know, whatever the case may be. And then they'll have to reply back. Like, okay. Well, when's your, when, when are you leaving? When are you coming back? You know, uh, you know, there's, there's like a bunch of questions we have to 
ask just to get all the information we need to process the request. And using forms just gets rid of all those texts and all those emails, right? They might email us once to say, hey, I want to do this thing because I don't, they don't know about the form. We send the form, they fill it out, and then the rest of the process is so much easier because all the information is in one place. And, you know, dear listeners, you don't have to have all the fancy automation Alex is talking about on day one, right? We've worked many years to have that kind of automation. At the very least, you just use simple, free Google Forms to capture the information you need to process a client request. You'll be leaps and bounds more efficient than going back and forth by email. Hello, my friends, Michael here. I'm just jumping in to make a quick announcement. If you haven't heard yet, we have a brand new course we're launching in Business for Unicorns, and it is about management and leadership for gym owners. This is one of my favorite topics. It's gonna be a live two-day course on Zoom, Friday, May 6th and Saturday, May 7th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time on both days. And in this course, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about how to hire uh, the best possible talent for your team, how to onboard and develop your team long-term, how to give and receive feedback on your team, how to build a culture on your team. Again, this is some of my favorite stuff to talk about. A lot of topics I covered in this podcast, and I really, really hope you'll join me for this two-day course. To learn more, go to businessfeedacorns.com slash management or click the link in the show notes. And if you enroll before April 17th, uh, you'll get an early bird deal and save hundreds of bucks. So if you're listening to this before April 17th, again, click the, click the link in the show notes or go to businessfunicorns.com forward slash management to learn more and enroll. Hope to see you in the course, my friends. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think too, you know, in 2023, uh, you know, the, the most extreme example would be, okay, I need you to come into the clubhouse. I need you to, to sit down and write out long form, mm-hmm. all of this information. You know, it's like going to a doctor's office. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody. Um, so we've tried to, to reduce the number of steps between them and, and what they eventually need. And it's been very successful. Yeah. And ninjas who've been with us for a long time know they could go to our website, click on the, the member section and all the links they need to make any of these core quests are all there. Um, yep. It used to be, uh, the termination form used to be a little separate. The termination form used to be only able to be filled out by staff members. Is that still the case? It is, yeah. Do um, so you want to just know, talk about how that's different than the other forms? Certainly. So, you know, all of them are housed on our website, but we, you know, we keep a couple of them more internal um, so that, you know, when, because what we're, what we're striving for is a real, you know, human connection, especially um, with the termination you know, people terminate for all sorts of reasons. It might be no big deal. You know, I'm moving out of town and I can't stay here anymore. You know, um, sometimes there there's an emotional angle. Sometimes there are other options that they don't know about. Mm. Um, so by making the termination form something that we fill out when we speak to them either in person or over the phone, um, it opens up the door while you're filling it out to have some really interesting or crucial conversations that might completely turn the entire situation around. Maybe somebody doesn't actually need to terminate. Maybe they just need to take some time off. Um, so what we like to do is we like to keep that uh, a more human interaction uh, to find those those opportunities. Yeah, I think that's beautifully said, Alex. It's the, it's the one form that we don't let people self-serve. It's like you have mm-hmm. to talk to one of us and we'll fill yeah. out the form for with you and for you, um, but it's so that we can have that human connection and say, do you just want to downgrade for a few months? Do you just want to come a little less for a little while? Do you want to freeze? Yeah. Do you want to, you know, uh, and so I think we can offer them all these alternatives that they might not even know are an option and we get to save someone. We have to keep someone around, which is yeah. so fantastic. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Thanks for walking us through that. I think it's, it seems really simple and intuitive on the surface to have people just fill out forms to make requests. Um, and in small gyms, maybe you can get away with not doing that. But for us, we've always had hundreds and hundreds of ninjas. It's too many people. <laughs> <laughs> it's too many people to process the oh, yeah. old fashioned way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, I want to switch gears and I want to talk a little bit about just kind of lessons you've been learning in your role over the last year and a half. Cause there's, you know, you really joined as, as you mentioned earlier, though, in a time when, um, MFF was kind of downsizing during the pandemic, trying to stay alive, you know, mm-hmm. and you really came on board when there's a, a, you know, a whole new team working in MFF, brand new faces, uh, you know, for the, for listeners who don't know, MFF was a place that had almost entirely the same staff for close to eight years. <laughs> we had like almost entirely the staff you know, the same people stayed for almost all of our first six, eight years, people started to leave a little bit. And so, yep. but when Alex came, there's a huge turnover. The pandemic really was a, a turning of a page at MFF. 
And so I'm just curious in, in your seat as general manager, what are kind of some lessons you've been learning over the last year and a half about what works and doesn't work in kind of guiding a team forward? Um, yeah, you know, it's been a very interesting time to learn how to manage other people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, you know, I think I, I speak for myself uh, only, but um, but I think a lot of people share this sentiment. During the pandemic, I think a lot of us had some eye-opening um, moments, some aha moments where we were like, mm -hmm. maybe I don't like to be managed the same way anymore. You know, may maybe I like to, um, maybe I'm looking for different things in my career. I certainly was. Um, so, uh, it's been very interesting coming out of, uh, I use big air quotes coming out of the pandemic, um, to sort of meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it's, it's required, um, a deep well of patience and empathy yeah. to understand that everyone is sort of in this transition period. Um, and so constantly reminding myself of that has been, um, invaluable, <laughs> yeah. you know, cer certainly in terms of uh, guiding the team, but also in terms of how we um, interact with and deal with, you know, ninja issues. Um, yeah. You know, we have a lot of folks who there's a there's a, a wide scale of people's comfort levels in returning to an in person gym space. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously dealing with like the Omicron surge was a big uh, hurdle, um, a very interesting challenge. Um, so, you know, it's easy, it's easy to be handed a big rule book and say, Hey, this is how we do everything. Um, we, we just had to be very adaptable. I had to be very adaptable in learning this position and learning how to manage others. And also just, you know, creating a new safe space for the ninjas. Yeah. Well said, my friend, this is, you know, uh, people can already hear why you're so good at your job because you're thinking about these things and you give a shit, right. <laughs> about trying to, to trying to meet people where they're at, right. And where they're at is different than where they're at pre COVID. Right. And I think you know, we'll just start with talking about like the employee dynamic part, which is, you know, and I think a lot of our listeners who have a teams will recognize this and be nodding their heads while they're listening is that expectations changed over after COVID for what people want from their workplace. And in many cases, rightfully so. And it shouldn't, it should have happened sooner, right? That sure. people are starting to, during COVID, realize that oh, gosh, I like working remotely, I like having some flexibility. I like, you know, um, I like having some boundaries in my life where I can kind of take care of myself. Uh, you know, I, I want spaces that are, um, that have more diversity of people and thoughts and opinions and better representation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of changes that happened during COVID to our kind of cultural you know, consciousness. And so, um, so bravo for you for recognizing that. Can you just maybe say, give me maybe a few examples of things that you've noticed about how people want to be treated differently in the workplace now that maybe was different before COVID? Um, certainly. Yeah. I think people are, I, I think people have raised their standards quite a bit. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I, I see it particularly in some of my peer groups, um, a lot of people realized that the systems that worked for uh, the people above us in the past mm -hmm. and never quite worked for us, we sort of realized we're like, well, we don't actually have to live that way. Like there's a, there's a more amicable way to, to, to function. You know, I, I deserve more, you know, whether it's um, like you said, flexibility or pay or respect. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that's, I think that's top of mind for a lot of people. Um, I think, you know, not to be discounted is everyone's sort of stance on mortality, you know, mm -hmm. it's just sort of like, you know, I don't know how many years I have left on this earth, you yeah. know, life is unpredictable. So in the time that I'm here, I would like to look forward to work every day when I wake up, I want to feel good around the people that I'm with when I'm there, I want to be treated with respect, I want to know that I, my voice is heard. Um, so from all of those different perspectives, um, it's been a very, um, uh, uh juicy time <laughs> to <clears throat> to manage people yeah. um in 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 the i think actually the best way possible you yeah. know i think it it's probably a big shock to people who were managing previously mm -hmm. and then have sort of moved into this new world i'm sure there are a lot of uh I, i'm sure the 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 gears are mucked up a little bit for some of them but for yeah. me it's been an, an easy transition yeah. Well, good for you. I mean, it shows because, you know, you're um, a pretty inherently empathetic person, right? And I can see that, you know, you wanting to make sure people are treated fairly in an environment that they can thrive in really matters to you personally. And, and that shows. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me, uh, I'm not going to play devil's advocate, but let me just tell you what I hear people say in response to this conversation sometimes. So sometimes when I'm talking to gym owners 
And I say, you know, like, let's talk about how you can be more empathetic leader. You know, people's expectations change during COVID. They want a place that's, you know, where they can really thrive. Um, they will say to me, you know, listen, I have a big team. Maybe, you know, they have a team of, you know, five, 10, 12 people, uh, 15 people or more, right? And they'll say, I don't know how to meet each person where they're at because everyone wants something different. Everyone wants to be treated in a different way. And once you have a team of a certain size, that just becomes too difficult, right? And that's a reasonable challenge, right? It's a reasonable challenge if the goal now is to really meet each employee where they're at, understand their unique needs and try to serve them in the best way that they want to be served. That's hard. So I'm just curious, oh, yeah. what, are, what are the ways, practically speaking, that you've tried to you know, meet each person in your team where they're at? How do you practically do that? That's a great question. Um, yeah, I think that there is a, um, there's a meeting in the middle um, mm -hmm. for one thing. You know, I think it's important um, to set the standards that you want to see people meet Yeah. Um, while also checking in with them individually. You know, it, it's important to have conversations with people day to day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, usually people are willing to meet you, you know, where you need them to be yeah. if you are consistently showing up to say, you know, how, how was your weekend? How's your family doing? How's your daughter? You know, those questions of, you know, getting, getting to know them, getting to understand them, you know, when it comes time for you to say, Hey, I know you get, you got to do this thing that I know you don't love to do, but yep. you know, we've all, we've all got to do it. Um, that I, I feel like it, it just sort of, uh, greases the wheels in a way where people are like, well, yeah, of course my boss cares about me. I care mm -hmm. about this company, you know, um, I, I'm a valuable part of this company. I know that 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 people are checking in and making sure I'm doing well. Um, so yeah, I'll do that thing I don't really want to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I think you said it so clearly there, and I think the one phrase that stood out to me was yeah, setting clear expectations and then having regular conversations and dialogue about how shit's going, right? Gives yes. people a chance to feel seen and heard and appreciated and celebrated and also like corrected when they're not on the right track, right? Like that's yeah. that kind of clarity of relationship, that kind of relational leadership quality, I think is so important. And I think you, you explained, I think you explained it so well. Right. That's the thing that people just don't, don't often make the time to do is to set clear expectations and then have regular touch points, which often means meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be casual, but it can't always be casual. <laughs> you can't just yeah. be like, we'll touch base with them once in a while or when shit's on fire. Right. There's a regular there's a maintenance to this of making sure they feel celebrated for their wins, that they feel supported mm -hmm. in their challenges. It can't be ad hoc. Yeah. And I, I know that you do that really well. Well, thank you. Yeah, I agree. And I'm, uh, well, I appreciate that. I should say not I agree. Um, but I, you know, I think too, it's a, it's, uh, it needs to go both ways a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. you know, one of our core values at Mark Fisher Fitness is candor. Yeah. You know, you have, you have to be ready to hear the tough things too. Um, you have to be ready to just be sort of like honest with everyone about, you know, uh, how, how their actions make you feel, how, uh, your actions make them feel. And, you know, that's how you, that's how you gain trust and understanding and um, a great relationship over time. Yeah. Well said. I think that's a great roadmap for our listeners. I think it's a great roadmap for them to think about. It's really just if you want to make an environment, the place where people really want to come back to and be, they need to have clear expectations, be both celebrated and supported, right? Celebrated for the great stuff yeah. and supported when it's not going well. Uh, and that requires some candor. It requires some uncomfortable conversations to make sure that that's on track. And we'll be better off. We'll trust each other more and we'll have more efficiency, you know, and all those things when we get through those uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. Um, let's in our remaining time, let's just talk briefly about the the member side of this, because you mentioned in this kind mm -hmm. of air quotes, post COVID world, we, um, there's, you know, different expectations from members too. And I know that, you know, one of the things we try to really avoid these days is having members have any surprises about what their membership entails. So you can talk a little bit about that shift of, of expectations from clients. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think anyone who's been, uh, running, operating or owning a business over the past couple of years realizes that, you know, customers have become more discerning. They're very um, uh, deliberate about where they spend their money. You know, one, one of the other challenges of the past couple of years, inflation, yeah. you know, um, they want to know what value they're getting out of um, the, the service you're offering. And they also want to be crystal clear on all the ins and outs because, you know, March 2020, you know, knocked us all down. None of us quite knew what to do, where to go. Um, so I think it's been important for us to create this safety net of information 
so that uh, there's always a resource. You know, people know upfront what they're getting into, what we expect of them, what they can expect of us. Um, and then just continuing to over communicate that, yeah. you know, it, it, it takes, it takes some patience because not everyone's going to read the fine print, but, mm -hmm. um, over time, the more you use your time to educate, um, you know, uh, the ninjas or, or your version of your ninjas, um, <laughs> it's, it, it becomes valuable to them. Um, yeah. and people, people have that, that feeling of safety that like, okay, well, no matter what this company is going to do right by me. Yeah, I think that's really beautifully said, and I love that phrase, the safety net of information. So for our listeners, you know, what, you know, what, what's your suggestion for what is like the one or two things they should be doing to create this safety net of information? Uh, one of my biggest recommendations would be to, you know, when, when you have, when you're onboarding someone, you're bringing them into a new membership. Uh, one of the things we've changed is we create a list of acknowledgments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at MFF, you, you may have sp spoken about this before, like we're not so big on the bureaucracy, the, the, the policy yeah. talk. Um, but you know, just, um, helping people acknowledge, like, you know, these are what the terms of the agreement that I'm signing are, yeah. um, just sort of that, that moment of like, read the sentence, talk about it. Um, that is very valuable because then there's, there's never a conversation where you can say like, well, we didn't, we never talked about this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that actually gives people security. People don't feel weird about it. They, it makes yes. them feel better later on. Um, that would be a big one. Um, I would say make the information available. Don't hide it, yep. you know, put, put it out in front of people, um, resend it to people if you need to. Um, yeah, that, those would be a couple, a couple big ones. Those are great. I think it's awesome. Because too often, I think, you know, I've seen this with a lot of gym owners, their membership contracts are so full of confusion and legalese that they can't even explain them. Right. <laughs> and like, that's a recipe for disaster. Right. And so yeah. we try to make our, our membership contracts as like plain spoken as possible. And as yeah. Alex is mentioning, we're putting, we're walking through a process to make sure they really understand what they're signing, what our policies mm -hmm. are for how you freeze or how you terminate or how long your membership is or when your billing dates are like that stuff should be really easy to understand. And we yeah. want to, we want to make sure they understand it. We're not trying to pull a fast one over anyone and that builds trust from the beginning. And then the second thing you mentioned, I think was so smart is just make sure that information is also available to them after they've signed up. So if they become a member, we're not trying to hide that information about how our policies and things work or making it really accessible. You can hang it up in your space, have it available on your website. You know, there's lots of ways to make it accessible, but I think those are great tips. Um, all right, my friend, I'm going to leave it there because I've already taken you five minutes over <laughs> how long we normally talk. So thank you for staying around for a few extra minutes. Um, of course. I just want to say I appreciate you so much. Um, you know, I think our listeners can hear right away that you're just, you know, so keyed in to making sure that people who work at MFF are having a great experience. You're so keyed into making sure our clients or ninjas are having a great experience. And, you know, you're exactly what every gym owner hopes for in a general manager, right? Someone who really gives a shit and is showing up every day to make sure that that's coming to life in real, in real time. So, so thank you for sharing your, your wisdom on this podcast. Of course. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. And listeners, if you love this episode, please leave us a five-star review. I think Alex and I've earned it today. So give us that those <laughs> five stars everywhere you listen and email me, michael at businessfeenicorns.com. Let me know who you want me to talk to or what you want me to talk about next. Thanks again for the great chat, Alex, and uh, have a good one. Listeners, I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.